Hey, y'all, it's Cherokee Starfish, and there he is. There's our boy. He's back again. It's Sir Miguel, and this is Hellgate, London. Welcome back. We are still in Covent Garden Station. We have several quests that we need to address, but not here, because we did all of that last time. No, instead, this time, their main story quests. Oh yes, we're actually going to push the plot forward. Check it out. I don't fear death. Brandon Land doesn't fear death. That's fine. We don't fear death either. We've already died once, and once you kind of like take the uh, take the lid off, once you break the seal, it it really is much less worrisome. Ahem. <clears throat> Good timing, Miguel. We've got everything sorted out. The information gleaned from Fox semi-functional PDA details two pieces of new technology. The first tech, called a Far Sight, identifies active Hell Rifts. With this, we now have a means to detect our enemies' breaches as they happen. Now, if y'all missed the last episode, we actually went into a breach. We crossed through a Hell Rift and went to the Demon Dimension. Uh, and it's trippy over there on that side, and we're going to do that more than once. And there are different locations throughout Hell. Not all of them are going to look exactly the same, so this is going to be a useful tool. The other piece of technology, also somehow related to rifts, is ref simply referred to as the device. Dun dun dun! TM. The device. Whenever something is just called the device, I'm like... Hmm. S sus. Blueprints to reproduce both texts were provided, but the device's exact purpose eludes us. I would imagine so. The next order of business is to find out exactly what the device does with a rift. Or perhaps it does something to a rift. We just don't know. Since you've already been to hell, You'll breach the only active hell rift we can detect in the British Museum with the far sight. You'll then activate the Fox device for good or ill. You wanted a chance to prove yourself, Miguel. Well, this is the real deal. Godspeed. Don't slip now. Here we go, the Fox device. get a better look at it. Check it out. It just looks like a, um, you know, like a, like an old timey sci-fi remote control. And there's more to it than that. You can see that this is, this is not a good angle for it. We're looking straight down at it. And if we could rotate the model, there's a little more depth to it. Um, so it's more almost like a, like a Ghostbusters ghost trap. But uh, from this angle, it looks like something that Marvin the Martian would have. Ah, from the heart of hell I stab at thee, says Captain Ahab. Indeed. We cannot actually put it on our bar. Yeah, it's a remote control bug. Maybe it remote controls a bug, even. We'll find out. You'll also notice... We have a couple new side quests that have lit up. So let's see what Mac Kinsey has for us this time. This guy's unreal. You come troubles? Was that ya, buggers? The uh, healing brew worked out good, eh? Elsinore's almost ready to bottle, loser. Just need like eight hearts of rage to seal the deal, okay? We'll grab those from some shriekers. We'll have ourselves a vicious potion, right? Finding the pukes is gonna be hard, though. They don't sit around in any one place. It is like, yeah, wander around. It'll, it'll happen. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Okay, so wander around in Bloomsbury and find Hearts of Rage from Shriekers. Beasley has another quest as well. Excuse me? I haven't slept in years. No, it's not because of stimulants. It's a byproduct of birth. Some good-natured defect with awful consequences. I don't know. But some things... Oh, some things become clear when rest always lies just beyond reach. Most clear to me now, and only because it pertains to our present fox-centric activities here in Station. Lan is overburdened. Hence his careless oversight of nine shriekers in Bloomsbury. Crushing them like so many fond dreams won't win us any awards, but it might lighten the load on our stalwart Templar champion. Then, what, one wink? Maybe two a night? If only. Think you can help. Bye. All right. Now this is very convenient because we already, because of Matt Kinsey's quest, have to kill some Shriekers in Bloomsbury anyway. So we need to kill nine of them and eight of them are going to have Hearts of Rage. And that's all the new side quests that we have at the moment. Let's see. Here we go. There's the Bloomsbury portal. It's open. Let's see where it takes us. And y'all help me keep an eye on our challenges down there. Uh, you see those icons. We need to pick up three guns and two melee weapons. And the little spirally weird looking one with like seven tentacles on it. Uh, that is the spectral damage indicator. So, we need to deal spectral damage. How about we take our Phantasmic Reaper for a stroll? Look at that. Look at this ridiculous sci-fi sword. It's very good. I love it. Let's see what it can do. Oh boy. That's a lot. Ooh-wee. Look at that. That was a lot right out of the gate. Some legendary and epic enemies, some rare enemies. Oh, we picked up enough melee weapons to uh, satisfy that. And let's see. Our spectral damage isn't going up. Hmm. That is spectral damage, though. Huh, weird. Hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, my mistake. That's not the spectral damage indicator. We don't need to deal spectral damage. That's the spectral enemy type. We need to kill eight spectrals. Well, that's a little bit different. But we'll still make it happen. We just have to find them. And there haven't really been any spectral enemy types yet. We've encountered necros. We've encountered demons. Uh, we haven't encountered spectrals yet. But this is about the part of the game where they start to show up. Oop. Oh, that's what that sound was. It's like, why can't I back up out of this doorway? There were demons. That's why. I'm loving the splash damage on this sword. It's really great, especially for Felbors, where they always pop up in, like, groups of three to five. Oop. There's another Shrieker. There's one. I'll try to give you a look at it. See? See there? They look kind of like the uh, the bloodsuckers from uh, Might and Magic 6, actually. Anything here? Nope. 
here? Nope. Okay. Oh, another rare zombie. Love that for us. Back up out of that. It's a big damage field. She had the bursting property. Chest, no less. Let's see, power pack. Ooh, some fuel. We got a mod. Love that. Get out of here. Another mod. Very nice. Now, you'll notice that the Shriekers are diving down to hit us. They're, like, mostly melee range. There will be flying enemies later on in the game uh, that are not going to come to us. Not for preference, anyway. That's why we get an attack that causes us to leap way up in the air to, you know, like, to where they are and to fight them. So... We may have an opportunity to use some of these guns. We've picked up a few, and I haven't really made use of them yet. And that's partly because, like, you know, y'all chose to uh, play a guardian. So I'm trying to make the most of our melee abilities. And we don't have a lot of special features or anything that actually um, make us better with guns. We just have guns that we can use. But there will be some. We will use some guns at some point. You notice here we don't just have boxes, we have priceless artifacts to destroy. So yeah, welcome to the British Museum. Hmm. Ooh, look at this. A tormentor, that's a new enemy type. Ooh, there's our first spectral, an orbile. Take a look at it. And you can see that spectral icon there, and that's what it does. Look at its ugly face. Look at it. Spectrals can be nasty because um, they drain shields and stuff, but the phased status effect, which is the spectral status, is a really rough one because when you are phased, all the damage that you take is increased. Oh, I think there's a zombie on the floor above us. Doesn't matter which way we go, they both go to the same floor. Let's go this way. I actually have uh, never been to the British Museum, um, and I have often wondered in playing this game how accurate this level is. So if you've ever been to the British Museum, as we go through here, take a look at the map um, and uh, take a look at the layout of the building. And I'm very interested to know, is this a lot like the actual British Museum? Also notice these statues here that are each dual wielding swords, like the kind of weapons that we would use. Look at that. Surely this doesn't mean anything. Surely nothing bad will happen here, right? That won't, uh, that won't be important later. Oop, another spectral. That's a defiler. They go down quick, so it's hard to give you a look at them, but... There's a lot of these statues you might not be able to help but notice. Hello, zombie. Goodbye, zombie. Let me just destroy all these priceless artifacts. I mean, the rest of the world's already gone up in flames, so it's probably... It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't hurt anything, right? Like, that's fine. If I just destroy the rest of our history... Oop. Another Tormentor. And see? 
See, they have an aura as well. You can see that purple field. They have a lot of shields. And they have an aura which tries to phase us and deal damage. Okay, there is the Hell Rift. We'll come back to that in a second. Of course, we want to clear everything out that we can before we go in there. For several reasons. Hey, there we go. Oop, just need three more Spectrals. And one gun. If someone would kindly drop a gun, that would be great. Sound is actually quite good in this game, so, like, the echoing's fairly realistic. Let's see, this goes up and around. So sometimes, you know, a zombie will just be like, rah, 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 and you can't really tell where they're coming from. Yeah, oh, gosh, see, there we go. Now you can kind of see them. Look at that. They are, uh, Groose. Groose. Out of my way, zombie. Oh, there he is. Oh, there's two of them. Shock rocket. Sounds like a brand name for an adults only product. So, why are we going through here and killing all of these enemies other than just the experience points and the treasure drops? Well, I mean, when we go into the Hell Rift. We have to come back out of the Hell Rift, right? That will be a thing, and we don't want to have to fight a bunch of enemies. We don't want them waiting here for us when we do that. Here we go. Let thy feet, millennium's hints, be set in the midst of knowledge. Alfred Lord Tennyson. I wonder if that's actually there, like if that's actually written on the floor of the British Museum. That's cool. Ooh, there we go. A lot of them. I'm really loving the uh, the splash damage. Look at all of these statues. These have a bunch of the same statue. Must have been an exhibit, right? Probably. Probably. So many boxes, and so little in any of them. There we go, we got something though. There's still... Still somebody growling somewhere. Sounded like a zombie. Who was it? Did one of them get away down here maybe? Oh, there he is. We found him. Hey. Excellent. All right. Now. Hmm. Hmm. Sounds like we're not alone. Someone could still be here. All right. We're going to come back here, but I want to turn in those quests. Because one of them might give us a gun. My pee, it goes in like nine directions. It's all wrong with this. They need doctors or something. <laughs> this guy. Well, 
thanks anyway. Hey, we got an achievement. We get a little applause for that. Excuse me? Uh huh. Thank goodness. That was fine work, Mikhail. Means I can cross you right off the suspect list and put you up on the swell Templar list. Also means I might find a minute to rest. Well, maybe later anyway. Can't sleep now. We're too exposed. Bye. Okay, no gun for us. Let's see what all we picked up. Ooh. A cyan holster. Hmm. Afflicted rad sheets. We can't wear this, unfortunately. Very sad. Corrupted rad holster. Ooh, that's a very good, like... Hmm. No, maybe it's very bad. No, corrupted. Oh, ugh. Increases use rate of marksman skills and adds 23 to poison attack strength, but reduces your total armor. Ooh, no. Ugh, ugh. Uh, now let's see. This is 23 armor, thorns, ignite defense. Not bad, but it is a reduction from what we have. This is the same. What about these pants? Yeah, not great. What about these boots? Yeah, well, our boots are actually not magical or anything, so those are a little bit better than what we have. There we go. Oh, and these are even more of a... There we go. Even more of a boost. Weapons. Let's see. We got a Surge Caster. Ah, oh, we haven't seen one of those yet. That is a grenade launcher that creates a field of ongoing electrical damage. Pretty good. Skillful Firebrand. Skillful Shock Blade. Sword of Reckoning one. That's not bad, but we have one. And a Heart Pistol. The Annihilator's Heart Pistol. Ooh, and it's legendary. Immobilizes enemies. Very nice. Stop Strength 25. That's a good Heart Pistol. Surge Protector. <laughs> there we go. We got two points from our quest. We're going to put them in Strength. That'll bring us back up to 45. And of course, we're using our Strength score more than anything else. So We also picked up some mods. I'm actually going to hang on to that in case I can give it to another character or something. Uh, maybe not. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's that other Scion weapon we picked up. We probably should. We don't need to keep that. Waiting on this. We have to be level 13 to use it. And these things. We have to be level 10 to use that one. Level 11 to use that one. Let's see here. We have, ooh, a Viperous battery. There we go, I'll move our blueprints down here. There's our dies. We probably don't need two of each, but let's see. Crusher's rocket. These all up. Oh, there we go. Ammo. Let's see. Basic shot guard. There's your surge protector. <laughs> Forceful fuel. Stun attack strength. Attuned tech. Critical damage bonus. That's not bad. I don't hate that. A shocking rocket. Basic shield booster. A burning battery. Some more basic health injectors. We'll sell those in a moment because we don't need that many. And spectral braces. Put these nano shards here so that we don't lose them. So here we go. <laughs> no, we don't want to. We don't want to burn batteries. These batteries uh, will burn our enemies. See, this adds 15 to our ignite attack strength. This one has a 1% chance to cause a toxic nova when it hits an enemy. This is shield overload, critical damage bonus, increased range. We have two relics in that. That's mostly what we're using at the moment. Do we have... That Nightblade was 
pretty good. It doesn't have any slots, though. We already have some fuel in that. We could put another battery in Fang Snort's Blade. Range isn't going to help. Maybe... What's the shield overload on this? 60%? What do you think? Shield overload or critical damage? That's probably the best two choices that we have between the two. Or between all of the batteries that we have. I'm thinking... That's 60%. This is 40%. It's been doing pretty well. Maybe the critical damage? This is splash damage, kind of like our Shatter Scythe. In that case, actually, maybe the Shield Overlook crit. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's do crit. There we go. That brought the damage up to 47. Yeah, and frankly, I don't know what our crit chance actually is. Could probably find that out. Let's see. Base statistics. Oh! 1%. <laughs> there you go. So we, we need to bring that up a little bit, probably. Alright, let's get rid of some of this crap. go. See what we get for all this. I wish you could highlight multiple items and disassemble all of them. That would be nice. I have only the very finest in order apparel. If you got only the finest coin. Ooh, we got some more nano shards. Nice. Good. Okay, cool. And there we go. So these, the shock guard, of course, increases your shock defense for 60 seconds and removes any shock effects. The shield booster gives you plus 100 shields temporarily. The spectral brace, that's the same thing as the shock guard. It's just against spectral damage and it removes the phase condition. Now let's see. A healthy razor shield. Hmm. Wow, we'd lose our shields, but we'd more than double the armor that we're getting, plus its hit points and phase defense. Hmm, that's not bad, but we have a shield waiting in the wings that we're waiting to grow into, so I'm reluctant to buy another one. What's this? Ooh, that's a legendary belt. Only five armor, but oh wow, look at that. Ooh, total armor value increased 10%, plus three willpower, all attributes plus five. And power regen, 33 per minute. Ooh. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like having the 34 luck. But that might be worth 1,300 palladium. Oh, well, hey. We could also buy this fortunate relic and get our luck right back. What is this? What are the relics that are in it? We've got... This one's power regeneration, and this one's health regeneration. Yeah, so... That other one had 33 power regeneration. So we could take this out and put the luck relic in, and it would even out. Do you have any other really good mods that maybe we might want or need right away? Uh, okay, yeah, let's let's do it. There you go. Now you can see this is the other, uh, like, the second step up version of a relic. The one is like the bone reliquary. This one's the eyeball. This is a level two fuel. They look a little more impressive. Okay. There we go. A pleasure doing business with you. Okay, we need to go to the demodificator. We have to remove all of the mods, but that's okay. So we'll go ahead and put this one right back in. And then there we go. And 
We'll equip this. There we go. Very nice. We'll just dismantle that for parts. And now we need to put our new nano shards and our other relic away because we want to hang on to that one probably. So, there we go. And I think that damage actually went up just a little bit because um, the boost that you get to the base item damage is actually related to the strength of the mod. So since this is like a blue relic and this is a white one, it went up more. Cool. Yeah, I think that that was worth it. That took half of our money, but it, I think it was well worth it. Hmm. We could put that other blue relic in there and make it even stronger, but power regeneration is not our problem. Health regeneration is what we need that we don't really have a lot of. Okay, well, back to the British Museum then. Yeah, okay, it was 50. So, so we got a little boost. All right, here we go. Into the breach. We are back in hell. We must use the Fox device. But not before we kill all of these imps. Demolish. Oh, they have a rocket launcher. I love that the forces of hell come equipped with rocket launchers. I mean, it makes sense. Like, why would you? Why would you not? Oop. We've got a boss. We'll take him out, but these little guys will one and two us to death if we're not careful. So, there's where we're supposed to use the Fox device. Try and put some cover between us and Sekworm over there. He has a bit of a cooldown on his attack, so you can kind of like... You can kill an imp or two before he shoots again. Oh, good, we got a PRD. There we go, it's just you and us, buddy. So he's regenerating. That's another reason that I wanted these other ones down, is so that we can just concentrate on him. See, he's got... He doesn't have a whole lot of, uh, like, shields, but he has a lot of health, so we don't want him regenerating that. You can see there, level 6. He has uh, 375 stun defense, 250 ignite defense, 500 shock defense, 125 phase defense... 250 poison defense. So, it can be hard to take a long look at these, but all the information is up there. Alright, let's take the fight to him. Boom. He's slowly... Oh, he's backing away from us. We, he, because he's a ranged attacker, it's hard to use the anchor power on him. I did as long as I could, but... He also has that attack. Get out of here. There we go. Oh, and we picked up a gun, so that completed the challenge. There we go, and we got even more stuff. Cool. Yay. So now we need to pick up another gun. We need to pick up three melee weapons, and we need to deal uh, spectral damage 18 times. So that's the one right there that's deal spectral damage versus, um, uh, like, actually kill spectrals. So while we're alone in hell, let's see. Man, our strength feed is really high. I'm, I feel like I'm going to have to put more points in strength again. But then we're going to have to start putting some in stamina as well. Let's see. Hmm. We don't have any points in challenge yet. That could be useful. Shield of Faith, I'm, I'm digging. 
anchor is not bad. We've been getting some good use out of that, and of course the damage goes up whenever we put ranks into it. We do also need one more rank in shield bash to unlock shield turn, uh, which we can put points into at level 10. So we've got one more level to do that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and probably drop this rank in shield bash, and that way we can do whatever we want at level 9. And then at level 10 we can unlock this. There we go. Okay, here we go. Hmm, look at this. So weird. Look, it's got like these orifices that are lined up. Hmm. Hmm. This looks like as good a place as any to place the Fox device. Sure. Exit the Hell Rift. Oh boy. We actually have a timer. Look at that. He's blowing it to hell. <laughs> And now we must survive. Fuse time remaining. Oh, look at this. Emperor Golkar. The statues are coming to life. Don't like that. Emperor Golkar? Oh no, there's more than one of him. It's probably fine. There we go, that's what we wanted. Oh, look at this. Big old boys. Get huge. So there are a bunch of these. All those statues throughout the uh, the area, and whoop, there we go. See more than one of them; they'll all come to life. Only one of them is a boss. Now we have a portal. A mysterious portal. Are you guys gonna come to life? Not yet, huh? Okay. Anyone over there? No? Any of you? No? Y'all good? I remember the first time that I did this, fighting Emperor Golkar and having to kite him into this room. And I would fight him by going up the stairs and around and back down this way and just kiting him in circles so that I could run and put cover between because it would confuse his pathfinding AI where he would try to follow you unless you got too far ahead of him and then he might turn and go the other way and it would give you a chance to regenerate health and shields while you waited for him to decide what he was going to do. Are none of the rest of you going to come to life? Okay, well that's fine. I mean, we have a mission. I didn't want to spend all day here, but... Sometimes it seems like only a few of them uh, wake up, and then sometimes it seems like every single one of them does. Here we go. Ahem. Into this blue portal, because we know blue is friendly, right? Oh. Who's this? Where are we? Hmm. A truth spoken. Clever coming to me. Yes. Yes, I can see why. Hmm. Listen long. Stars fell, and I wept. The void returned, and I wept. Midnight spread, and I wept. I wept, and wept, and waited. Boundless is creation. And so I am doomed to weep forevermore. Now, unbidden, this wisdom I will impart, for I am the sage, a woman whose heart will weep no more. I am truth. Will you learn? Even if we do, what will become of us? Only time and I will tell. I like that line. Only time and I will tell. Look at this. Hmm. Worlds great and small have ended before me. 
They are beyond count, yet I remember all. For each star I have bled and do bleed still. My tears are tomes, great oceans to remember the burnt peoples of lands far and near. And yet I am but one of many, forgotten in places bereft of light. Now remembered. And so this gift I give freely. There are others. They wait to speak. Seek them, and you shall learn. For I am the sage, and my gift is knowledge. Woe to the dark, for knowledge is light, and light shines still. To uncover nonsense is frustrating. To know, to feel importance without real understanding, that is maddening. And yet it was precisely then, amid so much frustrated bewilderment, that man first heard the fabled and near incomprehensible voice of truth. And there we go, Even you see that we there do were... Win, what will become of us? On the page Only there. Time and I will tell. <laughs> this, is, this is great, and we're, we're totally in London, this is fine, right? See? This is London. This looks just like London, it's just how we left it. But, uh, yeah, notice on the page there, there were five of those symbols, of those circles with bars in them waiting to be filled, and only the first one was full. Clever coming to me. Yes. Yes, I can see why. So, the sage has told us all that she has to tell us, but there are four more truths that we must learn. Okay. Oh, well, we should probably go. Let's dip. So, perhaps there is hope, right? The world needs more Templar. Hmm. A moment, please. I need to recap. You're alive. But Falk's device was a bomb. The museum rift is gone, and many demons are dead. You've also met something called a sage, some kind of truth, was it? Okay. I have no idea what to do. This wasn't in the job description. <laughs> I like that he's honest. Give me some space. I need time to work through your logs and all this there we go congratulations we made it to the end of act one so that was it that was the the end of kind of our little like chapter chapter one adventure and now we have even more quests yay including more main story brandon land is standing over there going oh, for fuck's sake it was a bomb. Ooh, spectral Blight Fuel. Cool. And we got some more die. Check it out. Blood Phoenix and the Tempest. We'll give those a try in a moment. Ooh, blue gloves. That's stamina plus five. This is all attributes plus five. This is just a straight up um, increase to everything. Melee speed bonus. Bonus to Blade Master skills. That doesn't help us, but uh, 149 stun defense does. Ooh. Look at that, though. Oof. Let's see. Bold Squire Helmet. All attributes plus five. Ooh hoo hoo hoo. We might want to hang on to that. Healthy Rad Gorget. Hit points 27. 12 defense against all special damage effect. Hmm. And double hit points. Why doesn't it just say hit points plus 36 instead of hit points plus 27 and plus 9? I don't know. So we gain one armor, and we gain nine more hit points, but we lose ten defense. We're okay on hit points. I think I'm going to keep what we have. Now this, on the other hand, that's a big armor jump. Huh. 229 phase defense or 22 defense against everything. Yeah, once again, I think I'm going to stick with what we have. We'll just disassemble this other crap. Let's see, 
Anything good over here? Ooh. A Muramasa Katana. Very slow attack rate, but it does have two relic slots. Physical Direct. Templar Broadsword. A Proficient Cinder Spike that we can't use yet. A Spectral Lasher's Phase Grappler. Goodness gracious. See, our guns, we're meant to be, um, to be using a sword. And you can tell because none of our guns are really very good. <laughs> and let's see. A Chromatic Flanged Shield. We have to be level 10 to use that. We'll see if that's better than the other shield that we already have tucked away. And yeah, we're using a lot of stamina, so like that's probably what we're going to have to increase next. Let's go ahead Good and we will sell. Price, you know, and they tip. <laughs> I love that line. Good men pay full price, you know, and they tip. Blue ammo, plus 30% damage to spectrals. If only we were using a gun. Yes, yes, goodbye. Okay, let's see. Let's put this fuel over here. And, oh, we got a nano shard. Very nice. Now let's see. So, this helmet... We could go ahead and equip it, but we need more stamina than we have. I'm trying to decide if plus five to everything is an upgrade, and I feel like it is. This is a bigger upgrade. Because we have to be level 10 to use that. I'm going to hang on to both of them and we'll see what happens. And now, here we go. Proficient Cinder Spike. Are these the same? Okay. This one has a critical damage bonus against Spectrals and two ranks in Sweeping Strike. This one has two ranks in Anchor and one in Aura of Renewal, both of which are skills we have and are using, so that one's better. So I am going to replace that because we don't need to keep both of them. Now, this shield, we have to be level 10 to use it. This one's level 13. So this one is 99 armor, 141 shields. This one's 143 armor and no shields. So that's the big difference. One is temporary hit points, the other one is just straight up damage reduction. This one also deals fire damage when we use it with a skill like Shield Bash, whereas this one is physical damage. Stun defense, aura of the elements, and shock defense. This one's st less stun defense, ignite defense, and 69 defense, nice, against all special damage effects. Between the two of them, I actually think that I do prefer this one. I'm going to hang on to that one, and then these we will disassemble. Before I go too far, let's see if we get another nano shard or something that I want to tuck away. Ooh, and we did. There we go. And now let's try our dyes on. This is good lighting, right? So we're currently using Azure Wrath. So let's see, what does Blood Phoenix look like? Oh, nice. Nice. That's very, very edgy. Ooh, it makes our butt glow red, too. Red for stop. No demons allowed here. That's pretty good. I'm digging that. I don't know if I like it better than the blue. Let's see what the Tempest looks like. I bet it's... Ooh. Yeah, it's like white and silver. That's pretty good. I like that. What do y'all think? Do you want to stick with the blue? Uh, or would you like to go to the gold or try like the red or, or maybe the white? How are we feeling? And I, I love how Hellgate London handles this. This is the way that I think dyes should be handled in games like this, where it's just an item you equip. Think you still like the blue? I'm digging the blue. I like them all, but I'm, I like that we have options. The blue is pretty good. I kind of would like to find a green one that would match our shield. 
but also one of these days we're going to change shields too, so. Okay, well, we'll stick with the blue for now, and I'll tuck these others away. Alright, let's go get us some side quests. Hello. Found them. The engineer demon runs have been located. All that's left is their annihilation. This mess is entirely my fault, Miguel. I led the original experimentation effort even though Len strongly advised against it, but adhering to my foolishness then would have served as an admittance of guilt, and to admit is to expose. Once exposed, my future would have rested on either side of a coin, tumbling through the air. Should it have landed tails, I'd have been useless in Lan's eyes. He can be uh, most unforgiving. Please, find these seven imp snipers in St. Martin's and annihilate them, Miguel. Help me right my wrongs. Grant me another chance to serve before Lan gives me the axe. Uh, perhaps literally. Sure, for a free relic. Yes, always a pleasure. Oh, this guy again. My pee. It goes in like nine directions. It's all wrong with it. They need doctors or something. Get it out of your system. There we go. <clears throat> oh, sir, this brew light made me an enemy of civilization. It's too good, right? The people drink and get all fighty. <laughs> Elsa nor heels like into forever, you know? I need to tone it down some. Well, I'm thinking we dose this stock with a bucket of evil, right? It bounce out all the good, eh? Just take this possessed pickle jar and use it on four sources of all evil, okay? That'll get me some beauty balancing evil. <laughs> I'll just sleep right here. So, yeah. Um, we, we now have a possessed pickle jar. Who can say exactly what this is? Well, um, the title, the title can say. Hmm. And we have to go take these to not one, not two, but four sources of all evil. Yes. I clean up nice, yeah? I mean, sure. Miguel's into it. Sure. They're the same ratty clothes on my back. But at least I scrubbed the demon chum smell off. Really. You pulling that last off out of the gutter brought me enough time to order my affairs. Well, most of them anyway. I still have this one little thing to do. If you liked the reward last time and are willing to help again, this payday will be even bigger promise. Lan says there are three proto-detectors scattered about, maybe in St. Martin's. Anyway, I'm to find and then work these three proto-detectors. Had something to do with Falk's gadget. It all sounded quite complicated. I'm sure if you find them and just, I don't know, fiddle with them or something, it's all bound to work out right. Keep your eyes open when you're traveling, eh? Goodbye. Sure. Looks like we're going to St. Martin's next. Boy, you best not let us down. I've been recalled to Templar Base by the High Lord Maxim. I am to report on recent activities. Loath as I am to admit it, I have little idea on how to proceed here anyway. Frankly, the truth of this truth eludes me. Worry not, Miguel. I guarantee your experience will be clearly related to the High Lord. Your experience and your quality. While I do that, you must pursue a different lead. Seek an audience with Lord Arfon at Karin Cross Station. You may be an ancient bookworm, but if any of our order will know the meaning of the sage's words, it's him. I sincerely hope to see you again, if duty permits. You have done well here, Miguel. Oh, thank you. I can offer no greater praise, for service is life. Godspeed. Experience is hard won in this day. Oh boy, more. Okay. 
Take cues from people you know. I do. Would you like me to hand them to you? Brandon Len. Oh, now there's a fellow. Woe is the boss who must execute all plans, but we can help him. Aid the zealot to save the man. He's all in a puff, but then life is quite tough. I could ease it, I suppose. I just need a good man and the lay of certain lands. Explore Leicester Square, won't you please? And it surely helped tremendously. Knowledge of the sort will lead us to the future when all's well. Life. Sure. So we've got to go through Leicester Square anyway, so like we just have to fill out our map. You remember we did one of those last time. And Beasley has yet another quest. Excuse me? I don't trust you, Miguel. But I could. It's the work, you see. Work defines us. To deny or relinquish responsibility is to degrade self. Degradation is diminishment, and what worth is a thing degraded and diminished? Better, what trust can be placed in a worthless thing? See, I'm not paranoid. I'm more rational than, well, everyone else. A harder worker, too, except for maybe Lan. Great worth ethic on that when I could be persuaded to trust you if you had those kinds of chops. A simple action could cinch it. Specifically, if you want to be promoted from my swell folks book to the coveted truly trusted list, I'll need you to take this sedative and use it on Lord Meal Knight in Leicester Square. Don't ask why. Even Lan and I need bits of discreet help on rare occasions. Bye. Oh boy. Okay. So here we go. The sedative. We've got to give him a sedative. And we actually will have to use that as an item. Let's see. Actually, I'm going to put that here. That one. Okay, that one's used automatically. Got to give him a sedative. Uh, now, St. Martin's, I think, is down this way. Yes. We have to go through Leicester Square to get there. Let's go ahead and make sure our other quests are being tracked. We're going to clean the whole place out anyway, but we want indicators up that show us our progress. Ooh, blue imps. These are gremlins. Gremlins are more powerful than imps. Blood coils. These are the uh, Ravagers that we fought earlier. Now we're in Act 2, though, so we're starting to get some uh, different skins on some of these monsters. We're getting palette swaps of stuff. Oop, there we go. We're off to a great start. Oops, the gremlins are shooting at us. I love that they have hell guns. Like they have firearms. Actual guns that they just shoot at us that shoot rockets or bullets or whatever. And I mean, sure. But at the same time, it's kind of funny that they're like, they're demons. And they're just like, ha ha! Gun! I hate these little things. They're so, they're weird and eyeless. And they just jump at you and scream. And they make like these weird kind of sick cat noises. This way. We gotta go down, down, down. And right here are the stairs. Is there anything else this way? Yes. And I saw some kind of boss monster there. That might be Lord Meal Knight. Oh. 
Oh, yep, yeah, there he is. Okay, let's get him over here. Electrifying, overwhelming, ethereal. There we go. Let's get out of the way. We are shocked. Ooh, a rare gremlin trooper. Oh, he phased us. You can hear the sound, like, go all funky, too. There we go. Give me the goods. We have to... Is that it? See, he's like, he's dead, but he's still showing up. I think that that's it. This phasing effects of contact with the spectral plane can be reversed using this device. Speak with Beasley. Well, I think we got it. Yep. I think we did it right. It's weird, though, how he's, like, still there. I think that what that is is so that you can uh, still use the sedative on him if you accidentally kill him before you manage to do it while he's alive. So I think his body stays spawned in order to give you that opportunity. Because if you're too powerful, you might accidentally kill him very quickly without meaning to. And if you're not powerful enough, then you may have to kill him in order to just survive the fight. Like, you may have to throw yourself into it. and You don't really have time to take your attention off of him in order to, uh, to use the sedative. I think he dropped a blue shatter scythe, so we'll look at that in a moment. Let's see what's in this chest. Usually, it is money, consumables, and sometimes mods, so I always like finding those. Good, there's the portal. Ugh, these things. God, they're so gross. But also, I just, like, I hate anything that spawns more monsters. Anytime you have an enemy and you kill it, and it means that, like, there are going to be adds. Still another zombie, okay. Alright, St. Martin's. And because we have to go through Leicester Square in order to uh, to get to St. Martin's, we're going to clear us a space, and we're going to use a PRD because we have to come back here. Come on, spit them out. There we go. Ugh. Oh, there's another one behind us. Ooh. Ew. Growth. There we go. Okay. Safe enough. Excuse me? Done. Perfect. It was work, and it was good. More importantly, it was good work that earned a lot of my trust. That is not given lightly, or at all, depending. Bye. There we go. Yeah. Stephen Patrick. Boy, is it? Wonderful. <clears throat> I know all about... Wait, no, that's not his voice. 
I know all about Leicester Square. The Templar land will surely make use of such wisdom. Well, we can only hope. Okay, there we go. So we did do it right. So now uh, we have the one cr uh, quest in Caring Cross Approach and two left in St. Martin's. So. Let's see what we got. What are our spoils? Let's go ahead and yes. talk to him. Yes, you're a man. Wonderful. Have you any money then? That's such a weird line. Okay, here are our two new swords. We'll check those out in a moment. Hmm. Hmm. Eh, eh. Primal powered wings. That's more armor. Huh, we would lose 27 hit points, but. It increases our total armor value by a little bit, and we more than double our special defenses. I think that's worth it. Whew. Also, these light up. Extinguishing Farrier Vices. There we go. And here we go. Braced Squire Jumps. Less armor, but I have a lot of stun defense and a lot of phase defense. That's probably a little bit better, because it's only two less armor. And we got stunned and phased just a moment ago, both. And we found a gyro brace that removes stun effects. Reduces the chance to be stunned and knocked backwards by physical blows. Got a bunch of fuel. We don't need to keep all of those. Let's see. Here's our proficient shatter, shatter scythe. So that starts with a higher base damage than the one that we have with two relics in it. We lose our rank and prayer of healing, but we gain plus 84% shield overload and two ranks in surge of restoration. Hmm. This is a proficient Phantasmic Reaper. That could replace that one. Oh yeah, this is 32 damage. This is 59. Two ranks in Surge of Restoration, plus 27% damage to Spectrals. So yeah, we'll just trade those out. And this seems like an upgrade as well, because we haven't used Prayer of Healing yet. A pleasure doing business with you. Now, let's see. Fuel... More fuel. And more fuel. We'll see, you know, at this point, like, which ones we want to keep. Ooh, here we go. This has a check mark on it. So you can see this actually means that now we have everything that we need to make these. Now, this is Kabbalist uh, armor, so we don't need to make them. But we could... There we go, the sedative is gone. So, yeah, we need to run our sword through the demodificator again. There we go. Ta-da! And that brings our damage up to 73. That's pretty good. We definitely have to do stamina next level, though. For sure. We gotta. Hmm, we're more than halfway to the next level, though, so... What's Murmur got to say? Ah, hero! Come and talk of adventure. Land serves the High Lord Maxim, but directs us to Arthon. Interesting. Arthon is patient and studious. For us, such wisdom may prove invaluable. Yet many others still prefer Maxim's rash assaults to Arthon's deliberate actions. A sign of the times? Do we stagnate? You're off then. Hmm. We'll see. We'll find out what it means for us. Oh yeah, I actually meant to see. What is... Prayer of Retribution, Great Defender, Prayer of Healing. Where is Surge of Restoration? What does it do? 
Shield Master, Heaven's Art. Yeah, I'll get to you in just a second. I don't think we have that. Yeah, that might be like a Blade Master skill or something. But that's okay. Like, it's still an upgrade just because the damage is so much better. Okay, another Imp Sniper. Ooh, I see a rare Gremlin. Come here. Why don't you run away from me? Oop. So, yeah, that's something else. We've not really seen much of that yet. These chompers right here? Um, sometimes... See, they're a new enemy. They can, uh... They can grow. And I'm actually not 100% certain of exactly what conditions have to be met in order for that to happen. It just seems like sometimes they do it. Oh, this guy's very dead. He's just like... He just ragdolled in a very funny way. Look at that. Eh. <laughs> oh, couldn't make that jump. Just trying to get up on the railing. Goodbye. Y'all are about to have a bad day. Yeah, feeling the difference in this sword already. But yeah, next time one of those chompers uh, expands like that. I'll let them go for a moment so that you can see the difference. It lets you get a better, uh, better view of your character model. You can kind of see what they look like. Again, I'm not really certain what prompts them to do that or what determines when they do or don't. It just seems like sometimes they do. I don't know if it's maybe... If they get damage on you, if it prompts that, uh, or maybe if they take a certain amount of damage without dying. Or it may just be a random chance. Like when they go hostile, um, if they don't die within a certain number of seconds or, or something like that, then there may just be a thing that rolls randomly in the background to see whether or not they're going to uh, level up and become a big chunk. I do not know. Alright, we got all of the imp snipers. So we're looking for those proto detectors. Where we want an AOE. Oh! No, okay, the trick of the perspective. I saw that shadow up on the wall, and I thought that, uh. Ooh, an epic insight. I thought that one of the chompers had gotten big. Thought we had a large boy. Oop, come back here. Got another legendary weapon drop. Very nice. Man, this room is full of enemies. This might be the largest concentration of enemies in one place that we've seen, actually. Hey! Love that for us. Level 9. It's okay, though. That's what uh, Aura of Renewal is all about. The more surrounded we get, the harder we are to kill. Love that. Oop, I see another chomper up here. He's getting away. Come back here. No survivors. 
Ugh. So many death maggots. The grossest enemy. Oh, they're so little. Literal ankle biters. Sniper shooting me from up on his platform. It's like, yeah, just give me a second. I'm, I'm coming. I'll get there. Oh, he jumped down. Oh. Oh, there's a big boy. See, look at him. He turns into this weird thing. Turns into a Morphoid. And when he does that, they get a bunch of hit points. And uh, then they breathe fire. And they can ignite you. So very briefly, they just become like a large chomper. And if you don't kill them in that in-between state, they transform into a Morphoid. And you may have seen the, uh, the teeth icon there. Oh, see, here we go. Look at that. Now we can look at him. Look at that. Very strange. Very weird. The teeth icon indicates that they are a beast type enemy. So the chompers themselves uh, don't really do anything. They, they aren't much of a threat. Their damage or their, uh, their potential lies in their ability to become Morphoids. Oh, hey, there's a proto detector. It's the first one. They're probably all. There's not much of this level left, I don't think, so they're probably all going to be grouped up. There we go. One of three. And it's just like the, the whatever it is, the Nano Forge or the Augmentrix 3000 or something, whatever it's called, back at the. Uh, uh, back at the stations. Where's the... There we go. There's the stairs that I'm looking for. We need to go up there. No, you don't. Oh, there's another proto-detector. Excellent. Ooh, I see another blue imp. I'm very pleased with the rate of uh, special enemies that we have seen spawn. Oh, he was electrified. Goodbye. Let's take that little shock noise. He didn't even turn around and fight us. He's like, ah, I'm on my break. Do what you want. And nothing else up here? Okay. There is no fall damage in this game, thankfully. Okay, so that? I don't see anything else. Might have been coming from this direction. Well. What is that? Why, why is that down there? Weird. Okay, I don't know why that was on our hotbar for some reason. Armor, health regen, that's not bad, but not better than what we have. These gloves, resistant beefeater wristbands. Okay, that's definitely not better than our bold shadow dancer arm wraps. And skillful arc light thermite rifle. Oh, that's a hunter weapon. 
Plague Blaster. That's a Kabbalist weapon. Another Poseidon Sniper. Skillful Firebrand. Skillful Smiter. So this deals spectral damage, just like the Phantasmic Reaper. Difference being, this is a slow weapon that deals splash damage. This is a very slow weapon that deals direct damage. So let's see. Yep, we already decided we need to put our points in stamina this time. And that's perfectly fine, because that means hit points. Alright, we can put our skill rank in anything this time. Because we have three ranks in Shield Bash. Hmm. I'm torn. This has been doing pretty well, and it scales a little bit with your level and stuff anyway. Um, this, of course, has been useful, but is also situational. This has been very useful, and any points that we put in that are just going to benefit us, because that's been our handy right-click skill, and it's it makes a difference. Um, but we haven't gotten to try challenge yet. I'm kind of thinking challenge, maybe, so that we can just see how that skill works, and I can show you that. Hmm. Draws enemies within the Holy Aura into melee range, because that's a really good combo with Anchor. Let's do that. We lost our rank, our bonus rank, in um, Prayer of Healing anyway, so it can go on spot four. Right. Forward. Forward to battle. And here is how it works. There we go. See? It doesn't just, like, suck them to you. It puts a ton effect on them and causes them to run up and melee you. And that can be great for enemies like uh, Sequworm that we fought back in the second Hell Rift, where he was a ranged attacker, and we're melee. So rather than chase him, if we wanted to use like the anchor stance or something, uh, then we would be able to hit him with challenge and force him to come to us. Ooh, a rare hell meat. Dislike. Now, the good thing about uh, rare Hellmates and epic Hellmates is that they do not generally spawn rare and epic zombies or death maggots, because that would be pretty rough. Imagine if you killed an enemy and the adds that it added, or that it left behind in their case of the Hellmeat, all the little creatures that it divided into uh, were just like the same level of toughness as it. That would be kind of bullshit. Alright, let's see. Let's try our Phantasmic Reaper for a while because we need to complete this challenge down here. Which means we have to deal out some death. There we go, we phased him. See that purple? Love that. Nice. Just need to kill 16 more enemies. 14 more enemies. Ooh, a hell me. Awesome. Now see, this is when they're beneficial. Chopped his arms off. Yeah, give us some ads. There's a whole bunch of them all at once. Now we just need to kill six. Thanks, hell meat. And we have one more map between us and Caring Cross Station. The Caring Cross Approach. Ooh, and we have some blade minions and shock husks up there. Ugh. Also, we need to keep an eye out. This is where the sources of all evil are going to be. There we go. Let's see what our next challenge is. Okay, we need to kill demons and necros. We're already killing necros. There we go. And we need to find some armor. The spectral damage is pretty good, but there we go. That Shatter Scythe is just too good. Ooh, a 
a dunder lich look at this I love that design and it has that weird like tracking shot that takes a while to dissipate so they can keep attacking you even after you've killed them which is nasty so yeah running into some interesting new enemies They look like Cenobites from uh, Hellraiser. And we picked up a medium health injector, which is better than a basic health injector. So this is the part of the game where stuff like that starts to happen. It's kind of like this is the beginning of the kid gloves coming off. We completed the prologue. We completed chapter one. Now we're in the real game. Hellgate London isn't going to play nice anymore. But we're also going to get better items. You win some, you lose some. Do another Dunder Lich. Let's get him before he shoots. Because they do deal spectral damage, which we hate. Spectral weapons overall... Um, tend to deal a little bit less damage than uh, those of other types. And that is because... Come on, guys. There we go. Group up. That is because of the phase status effect, of course, increases the damage that targets take. So that means that if, whenever you hit people you are phasing them, the damage not just evens out, but actually becomes more, which is one of the reasons why the Cabalists are some of the highest damage classes, some of the highest DPS classes, especially compared to their health and durability. They put out a lot of heat because they use a, a focus-type weapon, which deals spectral damage by default. So they are constantly phasing people. And then Evokers have some of the best spells in the game, which likewise deal. Oh, that's very funny. Can I get up here? There we go. Oh, I fell down. Okay, I'll just go around and fight them the normal way. But uh, they have Spectral Bolt and Spectral Lash, which not only have high chances of phasing people, but their Spectral Damage, their AoE... So, you're just constantly phasing crowds of people. There we go. I want to make sure we don't leave that behind. And the Evoker especially, uh, because they dual-wield foci. They have very high DPS. They are the Glass Cannon class, the DPS class, up there with Marksman. It's just the Marksman focuses mostly on physical damage and single target damage versus the Evoker focuses on um, AoE magical damage. They're a little bit more reliant on their energy score than the Marksman is. I hope they seem trotting out to meet us. I love their little run. Look at them. Come on. Over here. I think that was the last of that crowd. Yeah. Zambies. Getting some good drops, too. Okay. Let's see. St. Martin's was that way, so we need to go over here. That's where we killed the Dunder Lich. So, moving right along. Ooh, more of them. I love their design. I really do. Like, I hate them, but also it's a really cool monster design. And the way that they do sort of like the, the Naruto jutsu thing to cast their spells. 
to send that spectral shot hunting after you. Very cool. Look at their gross faces. What are you? Oh, Lord Ustamsul, energized, burning, and quick. Hey. Not quick enough, my guy. Uh. Not quick enough. There's the sources of all evil. We need to get this Dunderlich, though. Oh, he's a rare boy. A rare Dunderlich. So, I love how sometimes the um, more powerful enemies are also larger? Randomly? I guess to make them easier to pick out of a crowd. But the Dunder Liches, they have to be priority targets because they can and will phase you. So their upfront damage is not that bad at this level, but uh, you have to keep in mind that they'll make everything else hit you harder. Kill. Let's go back and get those uh, sources of all evil. They're all in one room. Okay, so here we go. Source of all evil. Source of all evil. You can see they're like a plate on the ground for some reason. There's the other one. There we go. His pickles should be more than evil enough, I think, at this point. Surely. Surely those are sufficiently evil pickles. Get away! Leave me alone! Stunning comes in really handy against any spellcasting enemy, of course, but you really want it against anyone who can phase you. Okay, this is a dead end. Anything else? Nope, okay. Back this way. We out. We out ya. Yeah. We know that there was a Dunder Lich right here. Nope, you stop that. Hey, there we go. Oop, Ember Freak. Smoldering. Oh, so he creates a damage field. Ooh, good drops. Okay. So we picked up those relics. I said a moment ago I think we needed to kill demons, but no, we had to pick up relics or magic items. Uh, let's see. The hammer is dealing physical damage, and then the star is we have to kill demons. That's what it is. And I'm, I'm misphrasing it, or poorly phrasing it. It's I'm saying deal damage. That's not actually how it works. You'll see that it only flashes and the number only goes down if we kill an enemy with the appropriate damage type. So that's what that means. You don't have to just hit someone with physical damage. You have to actually kill them with it. But here we are. Caring Cross Station. Oop, here we go. Phew. Safe. Ooh, there's the portal to Whitehall. Techsmith 314, Lucius Alden. We'll come back to these two. They're interesting characters. Waterloo Bridge, Beck, a Templar Guard. Right now, let's do what we came here for. Whoop! Didn't need to, didn't need to run after all. <laughs> Techsmith, Templar Guards, there's Murmur. There's our boy. And we have more portals down here. Green Park Approach. Admiralty Arch. We saw Waterloo Bridge back down there. And then here we're also going to have Piccadilly Approach. And Craven Street. So here we go. Get used to the, uh, the yellow stripes. This is our home for a little while. Whew. Joanne Ian. 
Ian spent his pre-war life peacefully smoking pipes, eating fine cheeses, and scribbling half-true autobiographical notes into a massive wine-stained tome he hoped to publish as fiction. When the demon turned cheese pipe and tome to ash, Ian focused his attention on healing as many as possible. It's his own quiet revenge. I enjoy our talks, but really, I prefer not to see you on my table again. <laughs> yes? Thank goodness for Lord Arfong. Carrying Cross Station needs the support of a reliable man like him. Someone to see to this and that. Someone who actually cares. Can't say I'm too fond of the men who tagged along behind him, though. We could do without Alden and that half-wit techsmith of his. Sure, we have our fair share of poor bastards who fell off the deep end, the way it is everywhere. It's just been so long since the sun touched us, Miguel. That sure to make anyone a little off. But Lucius and that smith are beyond gone, Miguel. Well beyond. Goodbye. <laughs> Your first introduction to Lucius and TechSmith314. Come on over. If there's one good thing about having Lucius Alden and TechSmith314 around, it's that those maniacs are sure to make the rest of us look good. As long as Arfon's here to notice, I'm happy with it. Maybe I'll even get transferred to someplace a little more secure. Monument Station would be nice. Got a couple friends there. So long. What's Murmur have to say? It's a big universe. If it doesn't work out here, maybe we could relocate. <laughs> Carrying Cross Station is not typically held by Lord Arfon, who normally resides in Monument Station. We are fortunate. Carrying, like Holborn, is usually ungoverned, though some have tried to manage it. Unfortunately, recent demon raids have somewhat diminished the region's supply of worthy officers. Good luck. Mm, sad news. Let's talk Arfon. Sit. Join me for a spell. Ah, oh, Miguel, isn't it? Hmm. Our good destroyer of hell rifts and savior of communiques. Well done. I have also met someone interesting. Tell me more of this truth, will you? Hmm. From her words, we learn little and much. Demons are here to consume and corrupt all, but obviously our world is not their first prey. We stand now against inevitability. I've thought as much. The cryptic words of the sage actually affirm my fears. Her testimony serves well as supernatural proof to validate my own down-to-earth suspicions. But who is she? Hmm? Ian Space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's probably why. That's like Matt Kinsey and the rest of them. That's they're all like this TM because. <laughs> and who are these others she speaks of? How shall we proceed to protect our insignificant selves against such terrible odds? I intend to figure that out, but it will take time. You've done very well for the people of Covent Garden Station, Miguel. Exceptionally well, even. Our men and women here are no less needy. Help them as you can. Come back to me when you've had your fill. I will have devised a plan for this truth by then. Learn from your failings. There we go. So now we have quests. We don't have as many as in Covent Garden. But... Come on over! I'm so glad I'm not 314. So very, very glad. You know he's crazy, right? You know his boss is crazier, right? Turns out not being 314's a lot of work. I figure if I keep making myself useful, no one will think to replace that poor bastard with me. But I might have taken on a bit much. If you could help me with a couple things, you know, to keep me from being demoted to him, I'd be real grateful. Like cash prizes grateful. First up, I'm going to need Piccadilly Circus well and thoroughly searched. So long. Alright, so another one of those where we need to uh, map the area. What does Gil have to say? Okay, I'm ready. Look, if we stay where we are, we're helping them bury the light. Laziness lets us give in without a fight. I know it's easy to stand here, to sleep there, to sit naked waiting for some angelic call. But this phone isn't ringing. Do you, do you sit naked waiting for 
angels to call it? Do you? Hmm. We have to make our own way in the night. We have to seize any opportunity to fight. And that opportunity, it's knocking now, Miguel, bringing down the wall. Can you hear me? It's ten tickers I seek. Find that in Piccadilly Circus. Then we can really speak. I heard, I know, you're going out there. I am going out there. It's true. Well, let's turn these other quests on. And then we'll go and turn these quests in. And, thankfully, because there is a portal station right here, uh, we don't even have to spend a PRD. Here we go. Covent Garden. Here's your possessed pickle jar. Such a shiny, happy people. Too good for old-fashioned booze and sin. Yeah. How am I supposed to follow that? Well, maybe people won't be like, killing each other after drinking, right? Sure. I just sleep right here. Daughter? Hello! You've done it! Astonishing! I assure you, Miguel, you've not slain me a demons this day. You've saved this Cabalist's future. I will make it count. Ooh, let's see. These are all unidentified, so we don't know what we're getting, but it's going to be at least rare. Uh, we'd have the fewest techs, but mostly what we use are relics and batteries. We have the least need for ammo, rockets, and fuel. So let's grab a relic. Yes, always a pleasure. And the ranger. Welcome. Now that is great. Really great work, Miguel. I not have found all three proto-detectors so quickly, even if I did bother to try. Thanks. Uh, he's got one more quest. Oh my gosh. Welcome. If you keep coming around and doing all my chores, I'm not going to have anything to keep me busy. Just the way I like it. Oh, and I'm not afraid to pay a solid Templar to call my hectic day some. Nothing wrong with that. Sure, folks like Brandon Lamb and that paranoid freak Beasley might scoff at ditching duty. But I'm an opportunist. Any opportunity to slack, I take. This next job's a breeze, by the way. All you have to do is act the courier and ferry this bill to Techsmith 314 in Caring Cross Station. Fellow owes me some palladium. Get the poor suicidal sod's X on the dotted line and you can keep a modest cut. Goodbye. Well, sure. That's easy enough to do. We can just literally come right back. There he is. Real men who commit suicide cut their own heads off with sporks. <laughs> Texmith 314 is one of my favorite characters. Oh, lovely. Exactly what I need to make my sorrowful day joyous. Bills! Thank you ever so much for reminding me of this, Miguel. Goodness knows, I do so love relinquishing most of the pittance I earn, serving my certifiably mad Lord Lucius to Shylock's like Ranger. Maybe I can get beaten later. Won't that just ice this beautiful cake of a day? Goodbye! <laughs> okay, well, hmm. Oops. I forgot we also have more portals down here, too. Oh, no. Okay, that's Green Park and Admiralty. I did show you those. Alright, that cleans us out. So now all of our remaining quests are going to be moving forward to Piccadilly Circus. And what's Arfon got to say? Will you be our shield against the dark? That is my job. Says Miguel, I am in fact a shield. I am a guardian. You're back. Good. 
We must discuss truth. Hmm? I'm afraid my research into the sh sage has uncovered little. But for one obscure reference in a tattered scroll, I'd have counted her appearance a total loss. The passage is cryptic and archaic. The rough translation reads, Want of knowledge births quest. Midnight's oracle records all. A mockery of wisdom, a tainted sage. In hell it waits to teach. There's little else and most of it incoherent. Nevertheless, I believe this oracle to be a perversion of the sage you encountered, an ancient demonic tome, the contents of which must slander truth with unholy gospel. But a clue is still a clue, hmm? If entire galaxies have succumbed to the burn as the sage claims, then truth cannot be unknown to the demon. Surely the beast would have tried to consume it. Failing that, hell may have crafted its own record of truth. This oracle is what we must now find. In hell it waits to teach. On that I have sent all under my command to rifts identified by the far sight you procured. You've some role to play in this, Miguel. You're bound to truth, and so must also seek it. Begin with the rifts in Piccadilly Circus. Do your best. For once in twenty years, I feel we're finally moving forward. But to what? Hmm? Something great, I hope. Learn from your failings. Looks like you need to talk. Yes, Caring Cross may not be as ordered as Covent Garden Station, but we're working on it, Miguel. If only there were more of land in this world. We could rest easy with every station in that man's hands. But damned if he isn't stubborn as a mule, to so blindly follow Maxim. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Okay. Well, so, we've got several quests. They are all taking us forward to Piccadilly Circus got two points looks like our strength and stamina feeds are about even let's put one in each there we go and let's see here guarded defender gorget that is an armor increase 15 defense against all special damage effects so that goes down hit points plus 12 okay so really all we're gaining there is some armor so i don't think that that's worth it this helmet, 100 ignite defense and less armor, yeah. A guarded beef eater chest guard, <laughs> love that. A mm. little bit more armor, a little bit more defense against special damage effects, but we lose hit points and power points, so that's a no-go. Asperus Farrier Terminator Vest, that's a hunter armor, of course. Tempering Squire jumps. Okay, so it looks like no armor upgrade this time. Weapons. The shield, 30 damage, 84 armor, and one rank in challenge. That might be worth it, because we have those 32 shields. Uh, but that is a lot of armor. What about this one? Ooh, that's even more armor. 84. This one's 88. Deals less damage. As spectral thorns instead of toxic thorns, and it's not as good. 130 stun defense. Okay, so this one's probably... The blue one is better, I think. Let's see. We're starting to get to the point now where soon what I'm going to do is in order to build up our cash, uh, now that we are in this act and more blue items are starting to drop... I am going to start selling all white and green items, and I will just be disassembling uh, the blue ones for parts. Skillful Firebrand, we don't need that. Skillful Smiter, we have that Phantasmic Reaper. Let's see, Templar Broadsword. One rank to Anchor. Another Proficient Shatter Scythe. Huh. Bonus damage to beasts. 
two ranks in Heaven's Ark. And I think it has slightly more base damage, too. That might be better, because the other one has way more shield overload, which is pretty good. Um, but we don't have Surge of Restoration, and we do have Heaven's Ark. So two free ranks in a skill that we actually have and can use is probably better. Which one? This with the Decomposing Razor Shield? Sorry, I just saw your, your comment. Yeah, that's, that's the one I think we're probably going to use. This one, though, ooh, the Rotted Sentinel Shield. That is more damage and also more armor and a ton more shields. We're going to have to hang on to that one. I think we might be switching swords again already. Let's see. Demodificator. Because you have two ranks in Heaven's Ark. There you go, 73, so it is slightly more powerful. Can I touch your sword that shoots bees, brave knight? <laughs> Can I touch your sword that shoots bees? Uh We do have some silly weapons in this game though. Okay. Let's go ahead and, and we'll call this a shield upgrade. There we go. We haven't had one of those in a while. We've been using this one for quite some time. We'll hang on to that one. Let's see if she's got anything better than what we've got. Ooh, that's a lot of luck. But I don't think it's better overall. And what about over here? Fevered Razor Shield. No. Shock Blade, Guardian Shield, no. Okay, she doesn't have anything for us right now. I was going for a drink later. You want to come? Well. <laughs> hmm. Perhaps. Depends on what you're drinking, I suppose. And let's see. Still can't use these. Now, we can use this one now. And I think it might be time. We lose 2 armor and 27 hit points. We lose 22 special damage defense. Uh, but it's plus 5 to everything. And you have to remember, like, the Rad Salad, uh, it gives us 27 hit points. But if we have 5 ranks or 5 points in stamina, we're going to get 5 hit points for each of those. So we're going to get back 25 hit points. We're actually only losing 2 HP. So really what hurts us is not even the armor loss, it's the 22 defense against special damage. But I think, I think, honestly, with the way that our stat feeds are, I would rather have that, pro probably. I would rather have the five points in all of our attributes. And here we go. So this one is better. We have to be level 13 to use it. But we can start using this one at level 12 and then switch to that one when we get the upgrade. So. Good. We're all in agreement then. I'll disassemble that in a moment. Now that we can use this firebrand, we'll use that instead of the burning molten edge. I just, we need to get our mod back out of that one. Okay, let's see. We picked up a bunch of stuff. Basic fire retardant. Medium health injectors. Let's see, those are medium power packs. I think it's time to start switching over to these. They're, they're not going to drop at the same rate as the basics, not yet. So we're going to keep a full stack of both of those, but it's been a while since we used one. So I think this is, this is fine. You can see a little bit of difference in the icon there, how, like, the tube is more full. Let's see. Where's our... There we go. Now, we need to identify this. Put our nano shard away. A reviving relic. Power regeneration 32 per minute. That's not bad. That's up there with that one. And I think, because we do want to limit how many we're hanging on to, we can get rid of the 19 per minute if we have two that are 32 and 40. 
So let's see. Demon Seeker's Battery. Basically what I want to do is I'm willing to keep as many as goes all the way across, like up to six at a time. And that's pretty much all that we need. So let's see. Fuel. Okay, so that means that we're... Basically we are capped out on fuel. 16 to ignite attack. Another 16 to ignite attack. We probably don't need two of those. 16 luck. Yeah, I'd rather have that one. Okay, what's this one? Shield overload, 28%. 24 stun attack. What should we throw away? 1% chance to spray shrapnel. That's, that's too low. And this one is 13 to stun attack. So let's replace that with the 24. And the shield overload. That is an analyzer. Demon Seeker's ammo. Anti-venom injector. And 13 to phase attack strength. We're not doing a lot of that. Do we have two that are... Okay, no, one's crit damage versus spectrals. Crit chance multiplier. And the other one is just damage to spectrals. Okay, so we'll get rid of all of those. And there's the anti-venom injector. That's the same thing as all these others. It's just for poison. And let's see. Yeah. See how this changes us. I like this helmet, but I would rather see Sir Miguel's beautiful face. So there we go. Ironically, this costs less stamina to wear. This one has an equip cost of 3 stamina, and that one's 10. But it gives us 5, so look at that. But that's okay, because it gave us enough strength that what that means is that now we can, for the next level or maybe two, dump into stamina. And that will work perfectly well, because we can always use more hit points. So, let's talk to Holloway again. Look at you, all armored up. You're like one big kinky toy, aren't you? <laughs> Holloway is also one of my favorite characters. Oh, that's right. We need to demod this. All right. Please take your mods. Don't tell me what to do. There. We'll just put that straight into the firebrand. We will disassemble that. That's got batteries in it. This has space for a battery and two relics. Let's pick those out, and then I think it's time to say goodbye, unfortunately, to Hellgate London for another week. So uh, I will be back next Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time with more Hellgate London and with the continuing adventures of Sir Miguel. So come back for that. And don't forget, if you aren't following yet, then definitely you should follow here on Twitch because it's free. And also, you can follow over on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube. And if you want to play the game for yourself, remember the version that's available now is not really the version that is um, that I'm playing. So, like, the one you can get on Steam will be different, but there is a link in the description below if you want to scroll down and try the game out for yourself. I definitely do recommend it. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of replayability, and especially since I'm playing a Guardian right now, thanks to y'all's choices, then uh, you'll be able to give the Cabalist and Hunter classes a try, or to check out the Blademaster and dual wield some of these big, awesome swords. So if you do try the game for yourself, uh, be sure to leave a comment or message me on Twitter where I post about what's going on with the channel, where, you know, that's where we put polls, cancellation notices, things like that. Uh, and let me know how your experience with Hellgate London goes. I do want to hear about it. I'm very interested to see how other folks react to this game if you get a chance to play it. And if you feel like you're over on YouTube oh, and... Uh, you know, you want to support us and you don't really use Twitch, you can also consider pledging to our Patreon if you feel like it. And we will end with uh, 
this quest from Beck. Oi, want a job? Right, good, got plenty here. Well, just two, actually. First one, need you to work over three side beacons at Piccadilly Approach. Not too big, not too big, but it'll help us keep our boys in the 433 fresh for the attack. And we will come back with a fresh attack next Thursday. Don't forget to stop by on Saturday for Baldur's Gate. And Specific Pixel and I will be announcing a new co-op series this coming Monday, so keep an eye out on Twitter for that. We'll catch you next time. And uh, until then, as always, thanks for playing.